Good morning, folks. What a surprise. Allegedly, Mars has the ingredients for life. The only thing I have to add to this discussion is that these are the heavier element ingredients in solar wind and coronal mass ejections. Same with star water. Brody, once again, sharing a good graph that demonstrates the weakening solar magnetic fields. Distance off the baseline indicates strength, or in this case, lack thereof. Moderate quake south of Australia had a couple bigger ones up north of the Pacific with Kamchatka almost hitting 6 magnitude. The top weather story is in Europe. A few days ago when we showed Sweden's cold wave, we noted conditions were ripe for a cool down and snowstorm across much of Europe, and that has indeed begun. As a reminder where the cold came from, the western edge of big northern hemisphere low pressure systems are drawing from the frigid air way north along the pressure convergence moving right to the sun because she certainly is stirring. You see two long duration flares, each the result of an eruption. First, up north, the central grouping was not on my radar as being dangerous magnetically, but the filaments are always an eruption threat, and this one destabilized near the top and rift off in the general direction of Earth. Satellite shows most going north, but definitely some sideways ejecta and even some missing low. This indicates a geo-effective blast. The Enlil spiral indicates impact to Earth likely early on the 15th UTC. However, the ISWA CME impact prediction shows it hitting a few hours earlier on the 14th. This may cause magnetic instability, but is not powerful enough to cause damage. The second explosion occurred within the turning active regions, snapping ejecta outward as another coronal mass ejection. Let's watch them both here. The images for the second eruption are not fully updated, so see how they both look from stereo B. Earth is off to the right. Now the second blast came from that central region with the southern magnetic inlet I've spoken about for two days. But going forward, let's have our concern on the new spot out front. The development in the middle has bipolar mixing and a recipe for big flares. When we look at the gong, a significant umbral change occurred during and in the location of the second eruption, creating what appears to be a larger coronal opening than before. Field lines make it kind of tough to judge on the SDO, but a darker coronal hole is definitely present. Let's hold that thought. The solar wind has spent yet another day about twice as dense as normal. Even without speedy streams pushing us into magnetic disturbance, the sustained density induces stronger than normal currents in the atmosphere and in the ground. Now there are no geocentric planetary alignments for days, but I see the potential for a coronal hole to face Earth while these CMEs hit and add to Earth's energetic instability. Perhaps one of the minor watches is in order. We'll let the numbers decide as always. I'll leave you with a number of images, including a look back at the first superstorm. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.08 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.